We are finally ready to stitch out an embroidery design. We have our machine all set up and ready to go in embroidery mode. So I've attached my embroidery unit. I have a 40 weight rayon thread on the top and a 60 weight bobbin thread on the bottom. There's a size 90 embroidery needle in the machine and I've also put in the USB stick. I have some white quilt weight cotton hooped up with some tearaway stabilizer in my 240 by 150 hoop. It's all ready to go. If any of that was confusing or didn't really make sense to you, then you probably want to go back and review episodes one through five just to brush up on all that knowledge. So once you have your unit attached, you're going to turn on your machine and follow the prompts for calibrating and putting the USB stick in. And first thing we're going to do is actually attach our hoop. So you'll take your hoop and look for the hoop connector on the side. You will gently slide it under the presser foot and you can lift the presser foot a little bit further if you need to. And then just slide that hoop connector right into the embroidery arm until it snaps into place. And it's really important that it snaps all the way in there because that's how your machine knows that it's attached. The very first thing we have to do is pick a design to embroider. As a reminder, there is a PDF booklet on the USB stick and on the Husqvarna Viking website that you can look at and know which design is which number and choose your design that way. So once you have your USB stick in and you click OK, a screen will come up that shows the contents of your USB stick. So we're going to go ahead and click on design so you can click OK and it will open some submenus. So we're going to choose the one with uh, our number in it. So one through 10, I'm going to stitch out design number six. And then I'll scroll down and choose number six. The hoop is going to move around a little bit and then a new screen opens. This is the embroidery stitch out screen. So this opens first when you load a design. This is the screen that will give you information about the stitch out and if you push start stop you can just start embroidering. But a lot of times you want to do some edits first to your design before you stitch it out. So to do that we're going to go to the embroidery edit screen. To get there you want to find the alt button which is in the lower right hand corner underneath the screen. It's actually a physical button and above it there's a number two on the screen. So that's showing you that you're in view two or the second step, the stitch out step. So we're going to click the alt button and go to view one, which is the embroidery edit screen. So there's kind of a lot of stuff going on on the screen. So let's take a little tour of the icons and just talk about what everything is. We'll start on the top right. So there is a zero degree and a angle and arrow icon. So this is the rotation icon. This is how you can rotate your design. Right now it's telling me that I've not rotated at all. It's at zero degrees. If you did want to rotate it, find the physical rotate button, which is underneath the down arrow underneath OK. So there's a button that says 90 degrees and has a little angle icon. If you click on that, you can rotate your design in increments of either 90 degrees or 180 degrees, depending on the size of your design versus the size of the hoop you're using. As soon as you push it and you are not anymore at a default setting, there'll be a black box that appears around the rotate degree number. And that's true for all of the settings. As soon as you change them to something that's different than the default setting, there'll be a little black box around it just so that you know that you've changed it. Underneath the rotate icon, you have two numbers and boxes with some arrows around them. This is showing you design position. So if you wanted to physically move the design around within the hoop, this is how you would do it. You can click the right and left and the up and down arrows around the OK button, and that will let you move the design from side to side or up and down. This is also limited by the size of the design versus the size of the hoop. Because again, if you have a design that's almost to the edge of the hoop, you can only move it a little bit until it's off the edge of the hoop and then unstitchable, so your machine won't let you do that. So this is how you can move your design around within the hoop. If you ever move the design and you want it to get centered again, you want to put it back to the middle, you can just click the OK and it will take both of those numbers back to zero. Below that, along the bottom of the screen, we have our design height and our design width. So these are two separate numbers. You can adjust the height and width of the design independently in 5% increments up to 20%. So if I click up on the 151, the first number, that's going to make my design taller. And again, the black box appears if you are at a non-default setting. Important to keep in mind that if you want to change your design proportionately, make sure you adjust both numbers the same way. 
For instance, if I go two clicks down on the height, I would also want to go two clicks down on the width. This is again something that could be limited by design size versus hoop size. So if your design is already almost filling the hoop, you probably can't go all the way 20% bigger because then it would be outside the hoop. So if for some reason the number's not changing when you're clicking it, that's probably why. On the left hand side of the screen at the bottom, there is a series of bars. This is showing you the speed that your machine is going to stitch at. There are speed plus or minus buttons above the start stop button, so that's how you would adjust the speed. And then above the speed we have our embroidery preview, so this is showing you your design, where and how big it's going to be in the hoop. A few other buttons for embroidery edit to talk about. There is a mirror button for mirroring top to bottom and also left to right. It's the buttons to either side of the 90 degree physical button underneath the OK arrows. Alrighty, so let's say you're all satisfied with your embroidery design edits and you're ready to go to the stitch out screen. We're going to click the Alt button to go back to screen number two. So some of the icons change, so let's talk about the new ones. We're going to start at the right hand side. There's a hoop icon and you'll see it says 240 by 150. That's the hoop size. If you click on the hoop button, which is all the way almost to the right hand side of the machine on the top, a new menu will open. The first option says hoop size. So right now it says 240 by 150, the size that the machine selected based on the design that I chose. If we click OK, a list will open up. These are all of the sizes of hoops that are compatible with the designer jade. Depending on the size of your embroidery design, some or all of the other sizes might be grayed out and unselectable. That's because the machine edits out the hoops that are too small to fit your design. So in my case, my design is kind of big, so 240 by 150 is my only option. So I'll click the left arrow to go back one menu jump. And this menu, which was the menu that opened when we pushed the hoop button, shows you a few different options for moving your hoop around. And this can help you with different embroidery functions. For instance, if you're embroidering an applique design and you have to trim the fabric, the applique fabric once it's stitched down, that can be a little bit tricky when the fabric's right under the needle. So if you open this menu and go down to trim position, it'll move the hoop forward and just give you more space to trim the fabric. So I'm gonna click the hoop again to close this menu and we'll go back to our tour. So the next number is the total number of stitches left in the design. So before you start stitching, this is the total stitches in the design. And then once you start embroidering, this will count down until it gets to zero when your embroidery is finished. Below that number, we have some information about thread. The first set of numbers shows you the current thread color that the machine is on. The second number in the parentheses shows you the total number of colors in the design. The numbers below that, the first number shows the current stitch in the current thread color, and the second number shows you the total number of stitches in the current thread color. The, the bottom row of numbers and icons is the same on this screen as it was on the previous screen, as is the embroidery preview. A couple other buttons to know about. The first one, let's say you've decided that you want to load a different design instead of the one you've chosen. To go back to your USB stick and all of your design options, go to the uppermost right hand button, which is the stitch menu button. When you push that, it will open back up your USB stick and you can choose a totally new design. Second button to talk about is the based function. If you look all the way on the left side of your machine, there's a button that says fix. If you click that, the light will light up and your based function will be activated. That means that your machine will stitch a square of basting stitches around your embroidery design before you embroider. So this can be helpful when you're using fabric that's extra wiggly, it wants to move around a lot, if you're doing hoopless embroidery, or if you just want to make sure everything is nice and stable before you start embroidering, then you can go ahead and activate the base function. If you change your mind and you don't want to do it, then just click it again and it will deactivate it. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my base function because I want to baste before I embroider, and the hoop is going to move around a little bit. Alright, so my baste is activated, so now I'm going to use the foot pedal and sew my basting square. Using the foot pedal, it's a really great capability that this machine has, because when you're basting, you want to make sure you have a lot of control, because you want the fabric and everything to be nice and smooth. So by using the start stop button, that can be a little more stressful. So using the foot pedal just means you can go super slow at your own pace and stop right away if you need to. 
So I'm going to lower the presser foot and then use the foot pedal and sew my basting square. Once your basting stitches are all sewn, your machine will cut the threads and then it'll move to the first stitch of your embroidery design. So now all you have to do is push the start stop button, follow any prompts on the screen for changing your thread color or trimming threads, and then basically just let the machine do its magic. Once your machine is all finished, you can put the presser foot up and then remove the hoop. So to do that, you want to push on the lever on the embroidery arm and slide the hoop right off. And there is your beautiful finished embroidery. So you can go ahead then and take out the basting stitches and take your project out of the hoop and cut away any stabilizer and admire it proudly. I hope you've enjoyed this video series and you feel like you learned something and hopefully you're a little bit less intimidated about the world of embroidery. Make sure you check out HuskarnaViking.com for the latest in projects, inspiration, and updates. It's also where you can download some complimentary software that will let you view embroidery files on your PC, make some edits to them, and also give you quick font, which is a really awesome application that can turn any font on your computer into an embroidery font. So thanks again for watching and happy embroidering.